Today's episode is brought to you by my very own Fred Motivates store. Go to fredmotivates.com to learn more about the love and success approach to leadership and how it can affect your school by building school community, crafting better leaders, and reducing bullying. Right now, you can use the code TEACHERRECHARGE at checkout at fredmotivates.com slash shop to receive 10% off your entire order. Now, when you order anything off of that shop, you're supporting this podcast and my love and success message. So go to fredmotivates.com slash shop and use the code teacher recharge at checkout for 10% off your entire order. My name is Fred Kep. Hopefully when this episode comes out, I'm a national champion. Let's get on with the show. to another edition of the Teacher Recharge Podcast, the only podcast on the internet hosted by me, Fred Cap. This past weekend, I was in Cincinnati at the PASL National Championship Tournament, and I am recording this before that happens, so I have no clue. I could be a national champion by now, but... I hope your spring break was fantastic. We took a week off for spring break. We are back now with another unique guest. Her name is Dina Yuanu, and she is from Switzerland. Actually, she's from London. She's living in Switzerland. She's a teacher at the University of Applied Sciences Northwestern Switzerland in the field of ESOL. She's an English teacher there. She has been in the education field for over 22 years and she has done numerous things, fantastic stuff. She's also founded Lessons in Self and she is at her happiest sharing her life's journey by inspiring and empowering others to become the person they are destined to be through her transformational education for life programs, which she's presented at teachers' conferences in Switzerland and the UK as well as teaching her methodology at schools. Without further ado, enjoy the interview. Hello, Teacher Recharge listeners. I hope your spring break was fantastic. We are back this week with another, I don't know how I get these connections, <laughs> but we are actually going overseas today. How do you say your last name? It's Dina. It's Dina Blanco. You are new. Think of you are new. So you are new. You are new. Oh, wow. Perfect. Well done. I'm, yeah, glad I, I'm glad I asked because it starts with an L. And so I would have never guessed that. But how are you doing? What time is it where you're at? Um, basically, at the moment, it's 20 past six in the evening, and I know it's probably a bit earlier for you where you are. Yeah, so it's noon. <laughs> it's noon where I am. Wow. So, so where is it that you're actually located then? Okay, so I am originally from London, as you can probably tell from my lovely London accent, <laughs> and I am now based in lovely Switzerland. Oh, wow. uh, there we go. So huge difference I've been here for the best part of 19 years like sometimes you've got to pinch me because it's a bit <laughs> surreal because I never ever imagined that I would end up in Switzerland which was down to my ex-husband I thought I was going to Italy but oh, I ended yeah. up in Switzerland right so that's a bit of a, a crazy thing but that's a fact so I've been here for the best part of 19 years now yeah Wow. And you work at a university as an English yeah. teacher? Basically, what I do is I've been a teacher for the best part of, what, 23 years now. So I've done teaching for a very long time. And I moved on from like teaching in schools. I also did a lot of teaching to adults as well as English as a second mm -hmm. other language. Mm -hmm. um, and then I moved in to a university where I now predominantly do teacher education. So what I am or what I do in my day job is I'm, I'm a teacher trainer and educator for teachers who are training to be English language teachers because English is a big thing in Switzerland. You know, we've got mm -hmm. the four languages and now we've got English in the mix as well. Right. So that's what I do at the university where I work. Yeah. Awesome. And then you also are the founder of Lessons in Self. 
Uh, tell, tell me a little bit about that. Your bio says you're at your happiest sharing your life's journey. So I would like to hear a little bit about that as well then. Let's, let's make you happy. <laughs> let's make everyone happy. Do you know what? Absolutely. Because lessons in self, I've got to tell you, came at a time at a kind of, I'm not going to say negative time, but it came at a very life transforming time for me. So basically I'd gone through, believe it or not, my third burnout. And then I just thought, okay, something is going on here and I need to sort of see what is happening and um, lessons in self was born because I have been through like a lot of people I have had my fair share of life's experiences and I just realized that well I guess my passion is education I just realized that for a long time we've been focusing on you know the academic aspects of education where we've been missing out on what at least I don't know how that's probably changed in America. I can see that there is a lot of work being done on well-being, but we kind of missed the point with young people in terms of well-being. So that was really important for me was to also get into schools and share the message. It's not just about academic success because it's also about the internal success. So that's where lessons in self really took off for me and I'm passionate about teaching skills and strategies to students to kids at schools and with teachers because it's really really important really important part of the journey something I did learn Fred is no one prepares you for it you know so when you fall you fall hard and no one really prepares you to get up again and I think we need to prepare young people especially this day and age to be able to get up again. And that's what I'm really passionate about. Definitely. I love that. So a couple questions coming from that. You had been through your third burnout. Well, what, what is a burnout? What does that necessarily feel like? What does that mean? Everybody's got their own ideas or perspectives about burnout. And of course, not forgetting the research that's out there based on what burnout mm-hmm. is. I look at burnout, of course, the process, it's a long process and it's very much about when we're not listening to ourselves and when there's certain things that we need to listen to, there's always going to be an inner voice. I talk about the inner voice, about guiding us. And when we fail to listen to that inner voice, it's going to want to be heard. It's going to want to sort of jolt us out of whatever it is that we are doing and say, listen, You've got to change something now. You've got to change something in your life. I think a lot of people think that burnout is related to a work environment. And, you know, there is also a lot of research out there to show that there are a lot of teachers who do suffer from burnout. And I think Mm. as a teacher, trust me, oh my God, Fred, it was so hard because you know what it's like. You are standing in a classroom, you're out there you've got to be teaching and you're there and you're going through certain things and trying to keep up the facade day in and day out, like pretending that everything was going well when inside it really wasn't. Oh my God, it really took a lot of courage, trust me, to stand in that classroom. So basically for me, burnout is that voice that's telling us to stop, Mm -hmm. to listen, to reevaluate and to look at our lives again. When it happens, it's rubbish. Trust me, it's really, really not nice. I was out of work for a year. Because to be quite honest with you, I just couldn't, I suffered from really bad anxiety. So every time when a thought came that I was going to walk back into a classroom and stand in front of people, I just panicked. So it took, yeah, it was really, really bad. So I was out of work for a whole year. I did eventually go get back into work. And that is, and through that, that's Burnout to Brilliance is also one of my programs that I also teach about burnout as well. But I like to say that burnout is positive because I think a lot of people like to look at it as, oh my God, it's all so negative. Mm -hmm. But I take the positive effects of burnout because I honestly believe it happens for a reason. There's a wonderful quote by one of my favorite playwrights called Samuel Beckett. Mm -hmm. And he said, ever tried, ever failed, never mind, try again and fail better. So he always talks about everything we do without the failing context or concept then we do not grow Mm -hmm. and like even burnout you know burning out for many oh my god that's like a huge massive failure for a long time trust me Fred I was like stigmatized I was like oh we've got to be careful with her because she's the teacher who's gone through burnout and even to this day but 
learning from it. I talk about it now. I want people to talk about anything to do with burnout, anything to do with mental health issues. Mm-hmm. We got to talk about it because they're yeah. not failings, okay? Not at all. It just makes us stronger. It makes us the person that we are absolutely destined to be. Definitely. And another thing about that subject as well is like if you are brave enough, if you are willing to talk about it, like with your colleagues or with, with other people, as long as you're not coming at it like, oh, my day sucks so much and just like bringing everybody down. If you are literally saying like, hey, this is an issue I'm going through right now, it is unbelievable how many other people are going through the same stuff. Oh, gosh. Like, yeah. That, in, in my opinion, that is the biggest reason why we need to talk about this. The thought is like, oh, push it under the rug. Like it's something to be ashamed mm-hmm. about. But like everybody around you is going through it. So it's like, we should probably talk about these things and face them head on so that we can see them as growth opportunities and we can help each other grow and and get over it. I love it. But with that said, we are going to go to the next thing, which is the point of this podcast, which is to start teachers off on the right foot with a positive mindset, a positive note with strategies and tips to take into the week to help them make the biggest impact possible in their students' lives and in their own life as well. So with that said, Dina, at the beginning of a week, so it's Monday, 12 hours ago in your world, 12 hours ago in my world, I was fast asleep. But if we go 12 hours back in your world, what are you doing on a Monday morning to hit the road running with energy, positivity, and just a great mindset for the week ahead? This is my every morning routine, come rain or shine. I get up, the first thing I do is I stretch. So I do five to 10 minutes of quick yoga stretching. I use an app and I do 10 minutes of yoga. Mm -hmm. I then meditate i think meditation sets me up for the day ahead i have to say also throughout the day when there are little pockets of moments you know when it gets really busy Mm -hmm. i like to go out and just take mindful minutes just to kind of what's the word recompose myself i recharge yeah recharge that's the word of course it's recharge what was i thinking of (laughs) i do my yoga i do my meditation I like to plan ahead so I kind of have a vision of what my day is going to be. And I also am grateful. So I never start my day by going, oh my God, I've got so much on and it's going to be one of those days and I've got this student to deal with or that to do. No, I start positive. And I think this is so important because especially as teachers, we can get so bogged down with all the admin stuff, with all the stuff that's coming at us that we've just got to sort of be grateful and say, you know what? I'm so grateful for the day ahead. It's going to be a great day. And I go in and I feel buzzed up that my day is going to be absolutely fabulous. I also like to read a little page out of my, I have this little book, which is a, a 365 day like meditation book with short reading. So I do that. And that sets my day off really, really well. And I do that every single day morning but like I said really importantly I go in with feeling good about what I'm going to experience today because when you go into school when you go into uni as I do with that energy you emit that energy and it's so important because you know people are in the classroom they can feel that energy so emit that positivity because people can feel you right (laughs) when you're not on that good what like that not on that positive wavelength (laughs) Amen. Hey, so you mentioned that when you get up and, and stretch, you're doing that yoga stuff. And then maybe when you meditate, you're using some apps. What could you clue us in on maybe no, what apps you're using? If I'm allowed to, I will do. Sure. One, the yoga one is Yoga Studio. Um, that's, and I have it like a 10 minute um, yoga stretch in the morning. Awesome. Um, the other app, which I think is really fabulous. I mean, mm-hmm. really, is the calm. I don't calm. know. It's fantastic. Yeah, definitely. I love it. And what I love about this app in particular, because people say, oh, I don't have time to meditate, Dina. Yes, you do. It's only 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. You know, even if it means having to get up that little extra early, it's just 10 minutes. There are days, of course, at the weekend, I can <laughs> sit and meditate for an hour, like do a quiet mm-hmm. meditation. 
But I like the Calm app because every day there's little wonderful thoughts that you can take away with and bring into your day. So 10 minutes of calm in the morning. And a little tip here, I'm not advising for people who are driving, of course, yeah. but when I'm on the train and I've got my early, early morning stints, and this is when I have to get up at half past four in the morning mm-hmm. to get to work for eight, I don't miss anything. I will sit on the train. People may look at me, but I am oming and doing my meditation on the train just because I know that this is what will set my day off in a positive way. Definitely. Awesome. Well, first of all, that's the like fifth time Calm has come up on this podcast, which means I think it's time to reach out to them about a flipping sponsorship, right? I mean, come on. And then... then, And then also, I also use a, if you're not, because Calm after a while is, is you would pay for that, yes? Yeah. Uh, I do have a free option there, though. It's called Deep Meditation. I've been using this app for a little while here to do my meditation on my own. I actually just started doing it two okay. weeks ago, but uh, and it was f- to get to bed because I'll get home after a soccer practice um, mm-hmm. with the team I play for. And those practices, because it's a bunch of older guys are usually after older guys, I say older, meaning like <laughs> not yeah. probably that old, but we get out of practice at, at like 1230 at night and oh, okay. it's very hard to go to bed. So mm-hmm. I'll come home, get a little snack or whatever. And then I'll get in bed and just put my headphones in and listen. They have sleep meditations there, so they help you go to sleep. Um, and that has really helped out a lot. They also have other types of meditations. But hey, they didn't pay me to do this, so I'm not going to talk very much no, more about know, it. This is it. Like, what's going on here? I think you've got to get to calm. I think you've got to email them. Yeah, like, right. Exactly. Right after our session today. I, did, I did use calm for a while, and it was fantastic. It was amazing. And I thought about getting it, and then I was like, I don't want to spend money right now. But I would highly recommend it. It is super awesome and, and very helpful. Next question. Uh, we're actually almost at the break here. We're actually at the break, but I am going to go ahead and ask another question really quick. What is something that you are doing that maybe some other teachers could learn from? Something that makes you unique or something that you do a little different? I've got, to, I guess it's me being me. I know this, I'm, and I'm sure that a lot of teachers are being them, but I'm open and I'm me. So, in other words, I treat my students. Yeah, they're my students, but I like to be open and authentic with my students. Mm -hmm. I don't shy away from talking about things because, like I said, you don't ever know what's going on in that classroom. And I think we're able to show our vulnerability as well. And I also, you know what, and another thing I do, I am also hands up because I always say to my students I'm here and this is a learning partnership because as much as you're learning from me I am learning from you so I never ever go into the classroom I never never go into a seminar room thinking I know it you know that I'm the bee's knees and I know everything there is about English language teaching methodology etc etc so be open and honest and authentic I do stand out from a lot of the lecturers because they say oh you're you're different from all the others because you know they play that lecturer role but I don't I'm me so this is what you see is what you get I don't I play a role and I think that's really important let's be who we really genuinely are and it's okay definitely because by doing that you're leading by example as well you're saying hey it's okay to just be you exactly and how much pressure young people are under especially you know at uni i see it all the time and if they know that there is somebody there that is willing and able to listen to them you hear awful stories and i've had a few young students taking their own lives because of the pressure because no one's given them the time of day to say do you know what it's okay you're feeling this pressure let's talk about it Definitely. So let's be genuine because yes, okay, it's a uni, yes, it's a school, but let's be genuine and open and authentic. I really honestly believe that's 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 what I believe in. Yes, I love it. Well, with that said, we are at the break. So we're gonna go ahead, take a quick break, thank a sponsor, and we will be right back. Yeah. 
For you, the listeners of the Teacher Recharge Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Now, whenever I have a guest on the show, I ask them for a recommendation. So, Dina, what is your recommendation? My recommendation is I've got loads, but I'm going to recommend this one because you talked about failure earlier on. So it's got to be Carol Dweck's Mindset, which talks about (coughs) growth mindset and fixed mindset. Awesome. So if you would like to listen to Carol Dweck's Mindset or any of the other 180,000 titles that they have to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player, just go to www.audibletrial.com slash teacher recharge today. Once again, that is audibletrial.com slash teacher recharge today. Back to the show. And we are back with Dina, who's in Switzerland. What is from London? Whoa, (laughs) but it is my favorite time of the whole week, of the whole day, but in Dina's world, the whole night, it's story time. That is the time of the show when I just shut up and let the guests talk and give them the floor. Now, this story could be funny. It could be sad. It could be downright depressing. Hopefully not, but it is all up to what Dina would like to say. So, Dina. You have the floor. Thank you so much. So I'm going to tell you a story because I'm just going back to my whole lessons in self. And when I developed these programs for schools and I have a friend of mine and I don't know about in the States, but in Switzerland, the school system is very much um, divided. So basically they divide kids at lower strands to Mm -hmm. mid strands and then high strands. So basically once you're in a low strand, you're basically stuck there. Mm -hmm. for a long time it takes a lot of work for these kids to be able to move up if they do eventually move up to perhaps be able to go on to high school and to be able to go on to university so this teacher contacted me and said Dina I'm at a loss these kids are coming in they're crying because they don't know what to do they feel stuck you know you're talking about depressed literally depressed like 14 euros who are like, you know, and I have to say a lot of these kids come from immigrant backgrounds as well. I need to say that because unlike America and unlike also in, in let's say the UK where I'm from, you know, there is still this focus about the immigrant background and a lot of these kids do tend to fall behind and that's just a fact, okay, at the moment. It's getting there for sure. Um, but at the moment, this was what it was at the time. So she said, you know, you need to come in. Can you help me out? I need some help here. So I walked into this classroom. I'll never forget it. And it felt, I felt like I was Michelle Pfeiffer. What's that <laughs> film called? And I kind of felt like I was going into, like, and the kids were just sprawled out on their chairs. And they were, like, totally, you could see, they were not in a good place, okay? So I walked in, and I thought, okay, I'm going to do a program with them based on lessons in self and interestingly as you can see I know people can't see me but those who do see me I've got dark hair because I look very Greek because my background's Greek so a lot of the kids kind of looked at me and thought oh okay she's already looking quite different and what I always do is I show them pictures of me and looking very successful like with my graduation thing going me on stage speaking to hundreds of people, me and my best-selling book, et cetera, et cetera. And then I just asked them where they thought I was from or tell me something about my background. So these kids said, well, you know, I bet your dad must have been a doctor or your mum. So they was a teacher. So they all came up with these ideas about where I was from. And then I said to them, well, listen, guys, My mum, and this is honest to God truth, she never ever went to school. So my mum's never ever had a formal education. My dad barely made primary school. And I said to them, and I'm standing here before you to tell you that you have every, or it doesn't matter about where your parents are or what they haven't achieved because whatever happened, circumstances that have brought them here, but you can achieve so much. 
And then you saw them shift. They were kind of like, wow, look what she's managed to achieve. I mean, the fact that I told them I left school at 16 with no formal qualifications, but went on Mm -hmm. and managed to get into university as a mature student, completed my bachelor's, completed my master's. It gave them a sense of, wow, if she can do it, then, oh, yes, we can do it. So that lesson, I taught them about focusing on what they want in life. We then looked at how to set goals. I also taught them um, visualization techniques. And then at the end, I had a wonderful session. I said, now we're going to go out of the classroom and we're going to imagine now you're going to come back into the classroom. And when you walk into that classroom, it's 20 years later and we're having a meetup, like a reunion. And you're going to tell me about all the amazing uh-huh. things that you have achieved in your life. Like, seriously even thinking about it I get really emotional but but these kids like walked into the classroom and their stories were incredible you saw their confidence like right I mean the way they were holding themselves Mm -hmm. they absolutely believed that they were going to go into art college they absolutely believed that they were going to have their own companies they absolutely changed okay and they were in there imagining that this is this was their lives And one particular girl was interesting. Um, The teacher then said, you're not going to believe that. But this girl was an introvert. And by doing this activity, she just came out of her shell. And she just said, you know what? She was incredibly talkative. It was incredible. And after that session, I just felt like crying every time I think about it. It's just because it. this is why I do what I do, right? Then I got an email from the teacher, um, like just before the end of the summer. She said, Dina, you are not going to believe this. But two of those kids have been accepted to art college. None of the kids at that low strand have ever been accepted before. Wow. And another three kids got accepted into going to, to like a apprenticeship in nursing. Mm-hmm. And basically she said, Dina, they all passed their exams. Wow. So none of them failed. And the teachers are like, what happened? What just happened? Just that is a confirmation for me to tell me, Dina, you keep doing what you're doing because this is what impacts lives. And like I said, every success story, because that for me is a success story. It's just brilliant to think that you can go in and you can support these kids, especially kids who just were so downhearted and saying to them, you know, look at me, guys. You know what, I came from the same background as you guys, but look at me, everything is possible. So giving them a new sense of hope and direction. So that's my, that's my story because I'm so proud of them and I'm happy to say I'm going back there again because she's got another class that she'd like me to come in. So I'm going back there again that's soon. So well. awesome. I've never heard the idea to go and challenge your kids to leave the room, then come back in as your future self. Like that is so... <laughs> Cool. What a unique, awesome idea. That'll probably be the challenge for this week at the end of the episode. I love that. So (laughs) awesome. Well, we are about out of time, unfortunately. So with that said, if people want to get a hold of you, if they want to follow you, if they want to talk to you about possibly coming and speaking to their students, how can they do that? Absolutely. Well, you can definitely go online and check out my website, which is www.lessons-in-self.com. And you'll find everything about me and what I do there. You can, of course, drop me a line at dina at lessonsinself.com as well. And I would, you know what, that is such a cool idea. I would love for your teachers out there to try this activity out and do let me know how it goes. But I'd be so happy if anybody wants to contact me to talk more about what it is I do. And if they want any tips, I would love to support you. I love it. And we'll have the link to all of that and more in the description because I think you you've written a a book or two yes yeah I've written a book called for success university for women in leadership and that was a a number one bestseller so that was quite that's that tells you something a little bit about my story you can find that actually on Amazon as well in addition to that like I said I also do a lot of uh, seminars and workshops for teachers because I feel it's also important to focus on the teacher's well-being because so many of us are burning out. Awesome. Well, we will give links to all of that good stuff in the description. And Dina, thank you so much for taking the time out of your night to join (laughs) on this episode. It's been fantastic. We all appreciate it.
And oh, this is a great you. start to a Monday, isn't it? Whoa, this is great. Thank you so much for having me. And I really enjoyed it, Fred. We are almost there. We're almost at the end of the show. But first, my weekly challenge. Now, every week I give you a challenge to take into the week to help impact your students at the highest level possible and help you get through the week with positivity and motivation. This week, I'd like you to try that exercise that Dina mentioned where she told students to leave the room and then come back in as their future selves. I just thought that was so unique and I'd love to hear about it. I'm sure she would love to hear about it as well. So if you could just email me teacher recharge podcast at gmail.com. Let me know how that goes. I can share it on the Instagram, on the Twitter, on the Facebook, all that stuff. Everyone would love to hear about it. And I hope That puts a little bit of perspective in your students' lives. Let me know how that goes. Also, don't forget to go to fredmotivates.com. Check out the love and success approach to leadership and check out the shop. Use code TEACHERRECHARGE at checkout for 10% off that entire order. And until next week, go out, be happy, and make happy. Have a great week. Much love. (laughs) 